Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Pod Mario Nook's last time we did it. <laughs> Quite a final stage. We faced Valimar. And like damn. <laughs> I then again I shouldn't be surprised anymore. It was able to reproduce like so many things. And in this episode, we're gonna see another blue orb created by this stage. See? And it's just about Reen and Osborne. So let's take a look. This could be the final time we get to mention Osborne. And again, we'll see what we see. Memories of a fiery gaze, Reen and Osborne. Transfer Kofi Corey. It was about three months after Operation Yormagon. Okay, so it's like around December. I received a confidential letter from Major Claire. It was an invitation to Val Flame Palace to take care of some unfinished business. Could you step outside for a moment? Understood. This is Chancellor Osborne's. This is my father's office. What is in this room? Hmm. Huh. Still doesn't feel like this is real. The reality may never set in. Following the war, we got most of what he left in his will to the rightful recipients under the table. Oh. That being said, it is not as if he much left much behind at all. Apparently, he disposed a number of his personal belongings before the war. Did he now? It's just like him, isn't it? That's the case. Now what was the item you mentioned you wanted to give me in your letter? Yes. In truth, it's an item I found in the ashes of his fireplace while sorting out the rest of the items. This is... Oh, Damn. This is before... Damn. Reen, Kasha, and Reen. And Osborne. Considering when he, where he found it, it was probably caught between the pages of his memoir. Unfortunately, all of his memoirs were completely burnt beyond saving. I think that at least one item is. Please accept it, Reen. Thank you, Your Majesty. Having this alone is more than enough for me. That he cherished his photograph to the end. I think that's all I need for him. I see. Hm. Goodness. But to think he had a, a son by his own blood. Eh? I know. Hold up. Following the war, it was difficult to publicly mourn the very same chancellor who was responsible for it. Huh. But that tomb he built for his wife on the site of his former mansion. It seems he had his name engraved on it. Yes. Yes. I was in the area thanks to an activity for the branch campus and decided to take advantage of the opportunity. I thought it would be nice if he could rest peacefully in the suburbs with my mother. Osborne was a close friend of mine and a great man of the Empire. I was visiting him together sometime. The two of the steel made in crossbow as well, pet my hands. Yes. Feel free to ask me whenever you like. I'm sure it would make the two of you very happy. Though the ones, I guess, insane. I make it sound like we were really close, but I actually never got the chance to know him. Oh, if you think hardly knew him, then you sure, Lean, I'm no better. As you only knew bits of your true father, I only knew bits of the true Chancellor Osborne. A shame I wish I got to know him a bit better myself. Now that the twilight is over, and this great ordeal of history has passed, our job is not to dwell on the past, but to pick up the pieces and keep moving forward. Well said, Your Highness. Memories of a fiery gaze. Hope you don't mind the background noise. Sorry, guys. Man, no matter how many times I look at it, there's still something that feels off about it. I definitely saw a scene similar to this when I used Lunar Night or Mirror, but. Still can't imagine him making that sort of face. 
Well, I guess that's just more proof that I knew we ever truly knew him. Regardless, I'd like to clean this photograph up a bit and take good care of it. For now, though, I have an early day tomorrow. I'd best be getting to bed early. Oh, I see the picture! Oh, that picture! Next to the 50 mirror coin. What a nice touch. From CS after CS4. That faded day, I chose to surrender my flesh and spirit to the Black Knight, or e Ebon Knight. Yet it was on my own will that I decided to bring this empire to ruination. To free this land from the abominable curse, a man who chose to destroy the world in which his loved ones reside can hardly be considered human. Therefore, I pledge to become the man of blood of iron, one who would lead this world into strife. Let my right legacy be recorded here to serve as proof that I am, in fact, myself. In order to call forth the twilight, I had to arrange a number of pieces on the board, myself included. It was around that time I met a young boy, blessed with a special foresight of guessing Lecter. Audi was the son of that chain commander Arundel, a boy named Lecter. He had taken all of the guilt for his father's sins onto himself. And it was now being forced into a silence by his father's co-conspirators. I chose to give him a place to live in the role of a peace, and inspired with him a reason to live in the form of revenge. Perhaps the compassion I was displaying was something I had ought to dispose of, and maybe this was my way of trying to replace the son I'd given up. Seeing Commander Arundo had been egged on by the Ebon Knight as well, but why should his son be forced to shoulder the sins of his father? I didn't know his foresight grant him the ability to see the, all the way to the demise I had planned. But with the intrigue looked on his face, Lecter accepted my invitation. It was around the time that I had become Chancellor of the Imperial Government. When I was old and going negotiations of the four great houses, I came across an interesting young man. Rufus Alborea, a young man wise beyond his years, yet it seemed vacant and directionless in his ambitions. Calling me his father, he challenged himself to try and surpass me in an effort to prove his worth of his own existence. It felt like an encounter with fate to be called father again. In any case, I was pleased to see someone trying to, to overcome me. I looked forward to him demonstrating he was more than just one of my pieces on the chessboard that would bend to his will to curse. Yeah, and it didn't happen. I didn't think he'd be satisfied by merely being able to call himself an iron blood. I was certain that, when he finally found the answer he was searching for, he had the potential to become a harbinger of a new era for this world. This is where you met Claire. Before I even noticed, my first two years as Chancellor has passed. With Rufus and Lecter hard at work, rumor of the Iron Blood's existence began to circulate. Meanwhile, I see a letter about Reva, a friend of mine when I attended Doris. There had been undoubtedly suspicious ass accident. Figuring that the Ebon Knight's influence may be involved, I went to the city to clean up matters myself. It was there I met his daughter, Claire Revelt. From her, I discovered perhaps another case of the curse toying with the fates of the people of Erebonia. In the wake of such a tragedy, she used to develop, develop such a unique talent that could be called Enhanced Cognition. I decided to leave the cleanup to her. Despite being wounded, the girl showed the spirit and resolved to stand up to her own destiny. Figuring this too must be fate, I decided to invite her to be one of my children as well. I decided the least I could do for my deceased friend was to watch over his daughter and see what she could make of herself until the advent of the device. Then another. Uh, uh, wait. <laughs> wait. Oh. Oh. Then another unexpected meeting occurred around the time I was going to dry, trying to negotiate about the annexation with the mayor. So that's when she met Osborne for the first in a while. 
that she she waited for the right time to appear. I'm at a nostalgic place of my old silver friend. I heard she was going by the name The Steel and was operating behind the scenes part of the society. And yet we yet we spoke and felt that she was no different she'd been back then, seeming nervous for my well being. The Jarai Annex. One could say that the seeds of the curse have been sown for the stage where the rivalry was set, so that's when she met the seven egg. Yes. When I told her such, she left without saying much else. I should have commended her for her hard work, yet we both maintained our usual cold exteriors and couldn't get our true feelings across. And yet another eventually another child joined the Iron Bloods, William Orion, also known as OZ73, a nearly perfect homunculus. It seemed in the blink of an eye that a young girl, in bottom of innocence, developed proper human emotion and began to grow up. Melium had something I'd certainly never could have provided to the other Iron Bloods. As Claire and Lecter spent time with her, I could see both her expressions and their hearts began to soften. If she could help those children recover any of the light's richness that they lost to the wounds of the curse, I'd be overjoyed. Huh? I know. I yet understood that this too was part of the Ebonite's plan, as she too existed to become a sword, and she could bring about the end. This was just but one more sin I had to bear upon a mountain of others. Surely, I was bound to fall to Gehenna along with Ishmelga. Shortly after, huh? Shortly after I caught wind of the princess' involvement in the Liberal incident, the Gospel Plan. His triumphant return on the King of Liberos Arceo became the front page store of every newspaper. Just before His Highness was to depart from Libero, I want to give him my regards. Indeed, Prince Albert was an incredible man who far exceeded my expectations. One could say that if we face each other, the sleeping lion of the Empire had been awakened. On one side there was myself, who resolved to throw the world into strife, and on the other side was a young prince searching for an elusive third way. Even if he was a hindrance to my ambitions calling forth the twilight, facing him was a thrill like no other. If the two of us were to face up, it wouldn't end until one had devoured the other whole. I set my own machinations for a crossbow into motion. I agree away to his next move. Yep. A group of students from Thor's Military Academy had come to the Imperial Capital for a field study. So this is like CS1 Chapter 3. The Special Operations Class 7. I spotted a familiar face among their number. I already heard it from Teo and Claire, but this face displayed a kindness for caring for others. It was just like his mother's. He seemed wrapped up in all sorts of problems, and more importantly, he seemed to have grown up strong and healthy. However, it was clear that he was heavily burdened by the curse. Heart beating in his chest was if Shmelga's my own, as the source of the curse, I can't even begin to have guess how powerful its influence was. Having to bear such a heart and be burdened, how could my beloved Kasha, now residing the goddess, possibly feel about this? However, if he couldn't control himself now, he would never survive the days that were to come. I prayed he would continue to grow in his brief time he had left before the twilight. October 30th, Crossbell declared itself an independent nation and attacked Gorelia Fortress, resulting in its, its disappearance. Yeah. Uh, damn it, Tex. Oh no, damn it. In response, the Emperor declared war, which just was written in the Black Records. With everything set, he finally entered the stage. Carl Armbrust, the grandson of Jirai's f former Mayor Armbrust, apparently left alone after the death of his grandfather and burnt with rage until he became an embodiment of carnage, everything was proceeding just as I planned, but I felt that I was starting to see his true potential that people held. And if he were to speak of such potential, that young man Green Schwarzer became Al Alomar's awakener. As the Erebonian civil war got into full swing, the Ebonite became even more stronger. And trust with the Ashen Knight, he was sure to do well, but if his resolve were weak, he would surely meet his end. I don't believe that was merely thrusting a crew freight upon my son. Yeah, Crow's death spark 
the motivation of class 7 of CS2 so if only he can control the direction that his life takes I want to show him to sh I want him to show me that he has the power to combat destiny itself Don't mind the background noise. Finally, on July 18th, the Grob Arables manifested. Now we're back to CS3. Thinking he'd repaired the sabotage airship, Prince Albert rushed to the scene to lend his aid. Nearing the Empire's night sky, he and the courageous were blown apart. A human life is something that fate will easily cast aside, regardless of its own weight to the world. He should have been no exception. It seemed that at the time he had two moves, he too had succumbed to that cruel fate. I thought perhaps after the twilight he'd be a useful asset in rebuilding the nation. I felt true remorse for his loss. Thus, the crimson wings of hope shattered. The sword to end was swung. Green was overcome by the curse becoming a sacrifice. Seeing Milliam die before his very eyes flew into rage, he lost completely control of himself to the curse. I thought for sure that he'd who managed to keep the curse at bay up till then, would surely have been able to control himself. If you see a person die in front of Reed's eyes, <laughs> he's gonna lose control no matter what. On the other hand, I thought that perhaps he was lucky to be transformed into a demon. By the time he regained his senses, I, along with the curse, may have already been eradicated. If nothing else, I hope he could rest until the, it was time for the rivalry to reach its climax. September 1st. Today marks the beginning of Operation Yormungan as well as the long-awaited beginning of the rivalry. Green, who should have been in at the bottom of the spear, has risen once more to raise the, his blade against me. The curse has reached his peak and yet he continued to grow and persevere. He has had so many help from his friends and comrades, but that's not all. I can't but wonder where he'd be now had his father stayed by his side and watch over him. This is too unlike me. Perhaps I've not hardened myself enough. I cannot allow myself to waver after coming this far. In the event that the curse should consume me entirely, my son will be forced to take it on in my stead. If I truly prefer to fill that my role, then it is both my first and final duty as his father to do everything in my power to prevent that from happening. I don't believe that I live in a world where miracles can occur, but if by some chance even the prayers of a wretch like myself can reach the goddess, Damn, then I beg of you. Please bless Reen with a bright future. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's watching Black Clover, don't mind that. <laughs> Huh? That just now. Was that all a dream? Do you see everything? Papa. Damn. You have an incredible future in. Maybe it was just a normal dream, but I want to believe it was real. You carried everything on your own. Your self-sacrifice, man. You always put everyone else's happiness ahead of your own. Heh. <laughs> Maybe it's weird for me to say it, but I really am his son. <laughs> At a minimum, I should do more to repay respect to my parents as their son.
That's you now. <laughs> it's Altina. おはよう。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな。ゆうな